My water has a yellow brownish tint. It almost looks like iced tea. My plumber told me this was tannin. How do I get tannin out of my water? Actually, tannin in your water isn't going to hurt you. But <laughs> it doesn't look very appetizing when you drink a glass of water that might be yellow or brown like iced tea. We've actually seen many uh, that look just as brown as iced tea. So how do you get tannin out of the water? It can stain, it can cause problems. It's not something that you want to live with, that's for sure. Well, in times past, most companies have used what's called, very loosely we call this a tannin water softener. It doesn't soften the water, actually. It has, it uses salt, though. It uses the chloride side of the salt, not the, not the sodium side. And what it does, it, it uses anion resin instead of cation resin like would be in a water softener. It uses anion resin and that anion resin has, is especially selective, it has an affinity for tannin. And it's pretty successful at taking out the tannin in the water. First of all, if you have hard water, you need to have a water softener ahead of that anion or the tannin softener. Because if you don't, the hardness in the water will foul that, that anion resin very quickly. And that anion resin is very expensive to replace. So if you're going to remove tannin and your water is just even a little bit hard, you have to have a water softener followed by the special tannin resin salt using system. Now, what happens here is you're going to have two systems that regenerate. They're going to be dumping water down the drain. They're both going to be using salt. You have two controls. And so there's a little bit of mechanical issues here. There can be problems occasionally. Some people in times past have mixed the tannin resin in with the softening resin. It's not a good idea. In fact, it doesn't work real well, simply because you need to remove the hardness before it gets to the tannin resin. And if it mixes together in one tank, there's just it, it just doesn't happen. You're not removing the hardness before it gets to the tannin resin. And theoretically, the life is going to be cut, the life expectancy is going to be cut way short. Other people have taken dual tanks where they stack tanks, put one tank on top with softening resin, another tank on the bottom with tannin resin. Problem is you're limited to the size of the tank. They also have tanks that have a compartment in the top. It's called the impress tank. Uh, the Vortec tank is actually the name, the impress Vortec tank. It has a chamber at the top and a chamber at the bottom. You can put softening resin in the top, tannin resin in the bottom. The problem is again, you don't have enough contact time. You can't get enough resin in those two tanks. And I've even seen people put the softening resin in the bottom and the tannin resin in the top, which it's just the opposite of the way it needs to work. This is very problematic. You're, you're going to use a lot of salt. Yeah, you're probably going to take the tannin out, but you're going to spend a lot of money doing it. Recently, there's been new advancements in tannin removal technology. U.S. Water now has the Pulsar uh, disruptor filter, which has a zeta charge. It's microfibers that have a zeta charge and they trap things like tannin. They trap other things too, bacteria, heavy metals. But since this video is about tannin, we're going to talk about how you remove tannin. And the way that we recommend at U.S. Water is you don't even have to have soft water to do this. You want to have relatively iron-free water and manganese-free water but you don't even have to have soft water. If you have tannin, we have the Pulsar Disruptor Filter. And this Pulsar Disruptor Filter has been very, very successful at removing tannin at a fraction of the cost of an anion resin water softener or tannin water softener that we call it. Now, does it work every time? No, but it works well over 95% of the time. If it doesn't work, then you're still going to need it for polishing the system that you're going to have to have with a tannin resin. But in most cases, I'd say well over 95% of the cases, we are removing the tannin using just the Pulsar Disruptor Filter. And we have two sizes. We have a 10 inch and a 20 inch. 
My advice is if you're removing tannin, even though the, you're, you have lower flow rates, go with a bigger one because it'll filter it longer and be more successful. So don't do it for the flow rate, do it for the amount of, of tannin that you want to remove. Let me show you how well it works. We got a letter from a customer unsolicited. The picture on the left is water that is right out of their faucet. I mean, you can see how dirty and dark this resin, this bucket is. And then the second picture is the water after it's run through the, the Pulsar disruptor filter. It's pretty amazing. Most people's tannin doesn't look quite that bad. If yours doesn't look that bad, you're going to be extremely impressed at how well the Pulsar Disruptor removes the tannin from your water. If you have any questions, contact one of our water specialists at U.S. Water Systems and we'd be glad to answer those questions on how to remove tannin. And if you have other contaminants in the water that may compete with that, we need to know about that too. By the way, the most important step you can take in treating your water is to have a good detailed water analysis from US EPA lab, like our US water lab test. Check it out. Thank you very much. Enjoy your water.